Well, a recent watchdog report has revealed that the federal school system for children and military personnel pushes diversity, equity, and inclusion ideology on students while also promoting progressive and social justice activism. Of course, this is funded with your tax dollars. According to a report from Open the Books that includes an analysis of Pentagon internal documents, the Department of Defense Education Activity published a strategic plan called the Blueprint for Continuous Improvement, which outlines how DEI will be intentionally integrated across the entire organization. Even more disturbing, the report details how staffers recommended books for children as young as kindergarten that included main characters on the gender and sexuality spectrum. What else is the Department of Education or Department of Defense's Education uh, Association pushing on military children? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies at the Family Research Council. She previously served in the Department of Education in the Trump administration. Meg, welcome back to Washington Watch. Good to see you, Tony. So fill in the details on this curriculum that we're talking about and who is actually producing this curriculum. Right. Well, um, this is something, you know, one of the things that I just love about working for Family Research Council is because we are looking at issues related to the family and society and uh, defending God's truth on basic basic issues <laughs> confronting our country, we see things before other people see them. And um, this, we have a paper on our website that is dedicated to the issue of Southern Poverty Law Center's influence on public education. And unfortunately, that influence has extended into the Department of Defense education schools. Um, and this isn't this shouldn't be surprising because the the superintendent of schools for the Pentagon is a, a, a an alumni, shall we say, of Fairfax County Public Schools, which is known for its woke ideologies as well. So he's taken his you know political beliefs and and is enacting them at at the defense schools. It's really a shame uh, for to think about soldiers serving in, you know, overseas. That means they're likely serving in harm's way and uh, sending their children, taking their families with them, sending their children to, de to Defense Department schools. And imagine, you know, being deployed in harm's way and coming home and having your child, uh, you know, your son identify as a daughter or daughter identify as a son. And, and then to know that the first uh, per, pe some of the first people in real life who affirm those fantasies for your child were in the school that our government is paying for and that you as a military officer or enlisted man entrusted or woman entrusted your children to. It's horrifying. Uh, by the way, folks, if, if you'd like to see this for yourself, I mean, I know you know we're not making it up, but if you want to look at the, uh, the pamphlet, what uh, Meg was talking about, Go to TonyPerkins.com, and there's a link there for the SPLC's Radical Learning for Justice program. Um, Meg, so the, the, the DEI, and this is part of, we're talking about this in, in part because we want people to know what's going on with their tax dollars, but this is a part of the debate that's taking place over the, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act because that's what funds the government and, and some of these programs. But not only is it the, the, the gender ideology that's working its way into, but what really grabbed me when I saw this was that you've got men and women who are serving in our nation's military, as you described potentially putting themselves in harm's way to defend our country, but their kids are being taught basically to hate this country and some of this uh, radical SPLC pushed material. It is, it, that, that part is especially appalling. I mean, the, the idea that, uh, that men and women who love their country enough to lay their lives down for our nation and, and for me and for you and for everybody watching, um, you know that that we would undermine the the their children in this way and it, it fill their heads with these kind of anti-patriotic sentiments and and just you know it's not just that they attack the country when when you go down this road it's because 
these revolutionary activists and, and ideologues who write this material want to tear down our nation because they hate God and they hate America and they hate the family unit, especially. Right. And so it, it's just it's it's hard to find the words really to describe how appalling it is and the fact that it's being done right under our noses with our taxpayer dollars and we've known about it for a long time is i really hope that that members of congress will see fit to 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 doing their best to get rid of this kind of thing in our in that in that school system and in all school systems because it has no place in the american educational system yeah, we're we're having a hard time this week finding words to describe the things that we're seeing. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's beyond the appalling. Uh, so l- let me um, let me ask you a question here for because I know we have a lot. I hear from them. We have a lot of military personnel who watch and listen to this program. What do they need to be looking for? What questions do they need to be asking to find out what's happening in their schools that their children might be attending. Well, yes, for the children, uh, um, it's it's always important, you know, that family dinner. Is so it's so hard to schedule, but it's so important to have that time with your family to to revisit, go over their day, um, go through the backpack that comes home from school. You know, you need to look at all the papers. Go with your child if there's a computer issued. You need to go with your child online and and look at the textbooks that your children are reading. And a lot of times schools will send at home a parent link to textbooks so that you can access the material, but you really need to use your child's link and go through your child's access so that you can see what your student is experiencing and what they're being taught. And this was, you know, easier during the virtual learning because you could watch the interaction. But just because kids are back in school doesn't mean you should be any less vigilant about what is going into their brain and how they're being formed as children with ideas, because it matters. It matters. So um, the Meg, other thing Meg, about this program is but, that it uh, also... Let me, let, let me stop you. Are, are you suggesting that some school districts would give the parents a separate link that would be different than what the children would actually be viewing and 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 looking at oh absolutely yes that is that is not just some that is common practice yes that is what happens so you need to go on with your child's link um, that way you can Done see it. their grading, you can see their communication with the teacher, you can see everything that you should be able to see as their parent because you're responsible for them and that is your duty to oversee. So you need to go on with their link. And It, it is, you know, I, I had four children and they were close in age and they were going through school at the same time and it's a lot to keep up with. It really is. It's really a pain. And you want to say, you know, I go to church with this teacher. I I know the school. I'm there all the time. I can trust these people. And, you know, maybe you can, but you need to be sure that you can. And you, you, you need to do your due diligence as a parent to make sure that you know what's happening in your child's day. Wow. Uh, when I was in school, it was just Mom just needed to make sure she got my peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the bag. Now there's so much more you've got to well, look after. And, hey, and you had um, a textbook coming home that she could flip through, yeah, that's right? True. And papers she could that, see. True. You know, that was much easier. That was much easier. Well, so. w- when I brought them home, uh, they usually conveniently got <laughs> left behind. Um, you had another thought there that I cut you off on on, on this discussion, because I'm going to go to another topic here as soon as you uh, right. bring in that well, other just, idea. Just quickly, the 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 other part of this is that, you know, um, they don't just work over the kids with this radical ideology. There are a lot of moms who get who, you know, when the when the family goes overseas, sometimes the mom is the teacher in the school. And so um, this this has got uh, professional development, they call it. Uh, in the in the curriculum for the teachers too, so that they can be un- aware of their unconscious racial bias or whatever the woke terminology may be that is implying that we all are just secret closet racists and incapable of human relations of a kindly nature. You know that it's it's incredibly insulting and demeaning and divisive, and people are really tired of this kind of divisiveness in society. And so, yeah. um, you know, it's not just the students who are under this threat. It's also the teachers. But, but, but you got to you got to say something, you know, I guess we could borrow that line from the TSA. If you see something, say something. Don't be silent. Right. 
All right, I want to switch gears here. This is not an education issue, but it touches on the military and SPLC, two things that uh, we're talking about here and, and, and you're very familiar with. A photo was circulating uh, today, yesterday, on social media platform X that revealed that a deck presentation for training at uh, Fort Bragg, now identifying as Fort Liberty, uh, an Army base, uh, referred to pro-life groups as terrorist organizations. What do we know about this? Well, this is, you know, this is education, right? This is an education issue because it's training for soldiers. So once they work this out on your children, they bump it up to the parents. Um, this really is horrific when you think about it. Again, finding hard to, to have the words to say. That uh, that soldiers serving in, on a base on American soil who are serving our country would be told or taught that their fellow citizens, maybe their mothers and fathers and their grandmothers and their aunts and uncles and grandfathers, are terrorists because they support organizations or because they pray outside an abortion clinic or because they donate money to a crisis pregnancy center. I mean, this is just, you know, beyond well, the pale. And thank in one of the organizations God, literally, that one of the thank God one that of the someone pointed this out. Yeah, uh, someone took a picture, a screenshot, and circulated. But one of the organizations identified as a terrorist organization was National Right to Life. I mean, these folks have been around forever, and all they've done is advocated for the unborn. And, and the list of activities that could make you a terrorist are picketing. If you picket. You could be a, a terrorist. Why? Well, I wonder what happens to all those unions out there that yeah. Joe Biden has walked with. I didn't I mean, see the United Auto Workers on that list, Tony. Did you? I didn't see them. You, you know, but this, you know, I, I know we're kind of joking about this, but it's so outlandish, but this isn't the first time this has come up. Now, um, there has been a, a, a statement that has come forth from Fort Bragg, now called Fort Liberty. Um, that says that this anti-terrorism slide was posted on social media. After conducting a commander's inquiry, we determined that the slides were not vetted by appropriate approval authorities and do not reflect the Airborne Corps and F Fort Liberty, the U.S. Army, or the Department of Defense. I've heard that before. In fact, I can't even recall how many times I've heard that once they've been caught then they say, because, I mean, Family Research Council, American Family Radio, uh, Alliance of Ending Freedom, we've all appeared on these slides at one time sure. or another by one of these presentations. When they get caught, they say, oh, no, no, we didn't. We didn't approve this. Same thing happened with the Southern Poverty Law Center with uh, the, 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 the uh, Federal Bureau of Investigation right. with Catholic churches. You know, remember the memo? Well, oh, we didn't um, know anything about it. It wasn't approved. Sure. Well, Tony, have you been invited to Fort Bragg to or any place else where you've been maligned to explain your views and to explain to people why you do what you do and, and how it's an important part of our self-government of our country, that people be actively engaged in the political process and that they be free to discuss ideas and free to ex express their religious convictions? Uh I, I never we never seem to get those invitations, right? Fort Bragg has has rescinded this and done so on social media. But do do the do the men and women who experienced that training get a corrective right. lesson that it's okay to oppose Roe v. Wade and that in fact it's been overturned? <laughs> I mean yeah. this Th this is this a question is... I have and I never really get a satisfactory answer. This is taking indoctrination to a whole new level. And, and again. Elections have consequences, but it's it, it, I, I'm thankful. For, I don't know who it was. Nobody. They didn't take ownership of it. But I'm glad that someone snapped that uh, yes. picture and put it out on social media. Obviously, the RNC was not running that session <laughs> because they would have confiscated their phones uh, so that they couldn't take a picture. Well, uh, I would expect that yeah. phones will now be confiscated. Right. We, we're not going to be getting many more many more pictures like that because. People don't yeah. like getting caught up to their evil deeds, right? So, but if you see say see something, say something. Meg Kilgannon, always great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tony.